Hey, this is Kevin Shinnick, writer of Star Wars Force Collector, some Spider-Man comics, some Batman and Flash comics, just a, a lover of pop culture. And you are listening to Genuine Chit Chat. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another Star Wars book review. Now, this is slightly different to what you may be used to, because usually I do the High Republic book reviews, which are generally split into three parts, non-spoiler, mild spoiler, and then major spoiler slash plot overview. And I actually recorded this review for Force Collector quite a while ago. It was originally for my Patreon. Now, I record most of my Patreon reviews in the car, normally when I'm commuting to and from work. So keep that in mind, the quality isn't as good as you can hear me right now. But I have cleaned up quite a bit, and it still sounds fine to me. But generally, I release reviews on my Patreon for the supporters, which you can become a supporter for as little as £1 a month, a link will be in the description. But over on Patreon, I primarily do Star Wars Legends book reviews, aside from the book A New Dawn, which is a prequel to Star Wars Rebels. It's all about Hera Syndulla and Kanan Jarrus. But in short, this was going to get put on Patreon, but then I tweeted about how great this book was, and the author, Kevin Shinnick, who you just heard giving a plug for genuine chit chat, responded, or he retweeted it and said he thought it was really good too. So I decided to try and get into contact with Kevin Shinnick and his agent. I managed to, and I now have an hour long interview recorded with Kevin Shinnick that will be released tomorrow on Genuine Chit Chat. If you're listening on YouTube, then it will be on this very feed. It will just be the following day. But if you're listening on the feed of Comics in Motion or the feed of Star Wars Comics in Canon, then make sure you go over to the feed of Genuine Chit Chat on any podcast app. But I will also say that there is a video version for my conversation with Kevin Shinnick. So I'm really, really happy to release this as a somewhat of a double bill. So you've got this book review of Force Collector, as I said, I recorded many months ago. And then tomorrow there will be the release of my interview with the author, where we speak about this book, about Star Wars in general, George Lucas, Spider-Man, lots of really, really cool things. So I was, I was very, very happy to be able to do that. And I will say the first half of this will be just an overview of the book, why I kind of decided to pick it up, why some people haven't actually even heard of this book, and I give a general idea of my kind of thoughts on it, then I give a spoiler warning, and then I go through the sort of a plot overview in a sense. It's slightly less structured to my other book reviews, obviously on this feed I primarily do High Republic book reviews, but I have released some of the other ones too, so I just want to preface that, let you know that my interview with Kevin Shinnick will be out tomorrow on the feed of Genuine Chit Chat, both YouTube and on podcasting apps, and obviously a massive thank you to yourselves for supporting the show as always. There's lots of details in the description, but I repeat myself one more time. Go to patreon.com slash genuine chit chat, and for as little as one pound a month, you'll get access to over 150 episodes of Afterthought. Included within that are many, many Star Wars Legends book reviews and lots of other great content that some is Star Wars related, but the vast majority of it does not have anything to do with Star Wars. They are generally TV show reviews or movie reviews by myself and my partner Megan, so please consider going to patreon.com slash genuine chit chat. But thank you for listening, as always, my friends. There should be the first episode of my weekly discussion show about The Mandalorian out this week as well, once again on the feed of Comics in Motion and on Genuine Chit Chat's YouTube channel. That will be a weekly thing with myself and a variety of other guests talking about each episode of The Mandalorian as they come out. So there's loads of Star Wars content coming away from myself, and I really appreciate all of you listening, but I will not be back at the end of this, so when this book review ends, it will be the end of the podcast. But thank you so much for listening, as always, my friends. I appreciate each and every one of you. And of course... May the Force be with you. Hello, my friends. Welcome to yet another Patreon book review. Unless I end up releasing this not on Patreon. Um, But we'll see. We'll see what the Christmas or holiday season brings. Uh, But I'm going to be talking about The Force Collector. So it's part of the Journey to the Rise of Skywalker initiative. Uh, So for anyone not familiar with that, whenever a new movie comes out in Star Wars, they do a journey to the blank. Normally you get like one or two comics, just as one shots that come out, and then normally a couple of books, normally like a a young adult novel and sometimes a junior novel, things like that. A lot of the time it's just supporting roles for characters. Like when Solo came out, there was a book that came out that I wish I hadn't used this as an example because I can't remember what the hell it's called. But there's a book about uh, Kira and Han when they were younger, uh, sort of on the streets of Corellia. Uh, When I think uh, Rogue One came out, there was a book which I think is Rebel Rising, which was about sort of Jyn Erso's life in a bit more detail, her time with Saul Guerrero, her time alone, those sorts of things. So um, with The Rise of Skywalker, one of the books was Freefall, which is Poe Dameron uh, and his time on Kijimi. And basically half retconning his uh kind of backstory i say retcon you know no diss on the writer in any way shape or form it's because jj decided to make poe a spice runner and even though poe's backstory had been flushed out in the comics by charles saul he was the son of shara bay and k 
Kez Dameron, and both of those appear in the main run of Star Wars comics, which I'm currently tackling on Star Wars Comics and Canon, in the War of the Bounty Hunters and Crimson Rain crossovers, all that sort of jazz. Then in the Poe Dameron comics, it details, you know, a bit more stuff of, like, him being involved with the Resistance. And before that, I think he was in the um, New Republic Navy. So it's like, there almost wasn't time for him to be a spice runner. So that's why that book got made. Random pointless little tangent, but that is a part of the same media initiative. But the Force Collector, although it's part of Journey to the Rise of Skywalker, it has basically nothing to do with it. it. It's probably, it's weird because I haven't heard anyone talk about the Force Collector in any of the Star Wars circles that I'm in. And it's a, it's a really good book. Like I'm going to keep the start of this pretty much spoiler-free, and then I'll delve into some more plot details towards the end, give a brief you know, synopsis and things. Um, but I'm keeping it spoiler-free for the time being. But, yeah, it, it's set around the time... I say spoiler-free, stuff that you can find out on the blurb or the first couple pages of the book. I wouldn't count as spoilers, but this is just going to be two-tiered instead of the three-tiered like I normally do with the main reviews. I'm just going to be non-spoiler and then spoiler. But non-spoilery. So the time period it's set is around the sequel trilogy era. I believe it's just before The Force Awakens. That's that's what I think it is, but it might be after The Last Jedi. But I'm fairly certain it's before... No, it has to be. No, no. There's a scene in it that happens that has to be before The Force Awakens. I was right in my initial thinking. So it's set just before The Force Awakens, but, but The First Order are still mentioned in it and stuff, so it's obviously around that sort of era, because I think The First Order only really came about in the full force around five-ish years before The Force Awakens. I think they were kind of known about about ten years before, but they actually were more in the public eye around five years before The Force Awakens. I think it's a little bit hazy, both my memory and also what actually happened, because, you know, you get books and comics that somewhat overlap and things. Um, but it's got nothing to do with any what else the, the the pure thing of it is just there's a there's a teenage boy and he's getting these force visions and he's just trying to find his place in the galaxy that that's really what's happening and so he travels to try and work out what it means or some of his visions what he can do about it what one can do about force sensitivity and discovering what the jedi used to be like because the majority of people in the galaxy when the Jedi were around, had a fair idea of what the Jedi kind of did. But obviously, after Order 66, Palpatine basically erased almost everything about the Jedi, apart from that they were bad. And then once the Imperial Era came about, obviously they were like, literally hunted, but there was barely any from left. And then by the time of the sequel trilogy, the New Republic Era, Luke Skywalker was the legend. He was the legendary Jedi, you know, THE legendary Jedi. And there were a few other Jedi kicking around, but they were kind of like either low key or they were doing other stuff you know Luke was the main one so apart from people knowing potentially about Luke Skywalker or the legend of no one really knew anything about the Jedi and it's I really like that aspect of the book him kind of finding out about the history of the Jedi and talking to one person they go oh the Jedi were all bad and it's like well how it's like oh well how else would they apparently be there and then suddenly all just die out they had, there's had to be something wrong and then other people were disputing that the Jedi even ever existed and there's lots of little weird things and it's quite funny because it's all it's just a very clever perspective I just I really liked that element of it but it, it's a young adult novel it's by Kevin Shinnick I believe his name is and it's a really good young adult novel, you know, it's good, very good pacing, it was really interesting seeing where the plot was going to go, some of the little connections to uh, other bit pieces of Star Wars content, which obviously I always really admire, and it had the young adult feel that he's a teenager, and then he's uh, it, he spends a lot of time with another teenager, and then there's like the uh, the seeds of romance, shall we say, kind of starting to blossom a little bit, uh, which I always really uh, like. I think I said that in my review of Padawan, which I haven't, re as of recording this, I haven't actually released it, but it's going to be released, now that I've said it, I'm going to have to release Padawan before the Force Collector, uh, unless it's the ultimate tease. Um, but yeah, I like young adult books when there is that hint of romance and things. You know, I, li I like young romance. I think it's just, it's, it's a lot more innocent and it's a lot more just about what people feel as opposed to worrying about the wider complications. Because when you're an adult, especially in your sort of late 20s, early 30s, if you haven't already got kids or anything, then it's, is the person I'm dating financially stable? Do they want kids? And does that align with what I want? Do they want to get married? How do our families interact? How do our social lives interact? I really like this thing and they really like that thing. Can we both like both things and still support each other? Blah, blah, blah. These are all the kind of questions one would hope people ask themselves when they're kind of delving into a relationship at that sort of age when thinking about what their life's going to be. When you're like 16 
you don't think, is the person I'm with now going to want kids? Because you're still basically a kid. And you're not thinking about how much you want to have a child, you know, at that sort of age when you start to, obviously some people do it earlier, but start to, you know, uh, notice physical things about members of either the same or opposite sex or both. You know, you start getting physically attracted to people, all those things start to happen. And so there is a physical desire, but you don't quite have the the thoughts of babies necessarily, you know? So I really like young romance in that way that you've just got the innocence and it's just it's not very complicated you know you can have complicated romance stories which i like but the the love itself the the fancying of the attraction of whatever word you want to use to sort of describe it it's quite simple and i really like that i I really do um but this book has a bit of that in it which i appreciate it's got like four stuff in it and stuff that i think hasn't really been done that much there are definitely echoes of jedi fallen order which is a fantastic game and obviously i feel like the force collector almost felt like it was going to be a book maybe in the very early stages of planning around quinlan voss maybe like a young quinlan voss um, because quinlan voss who was made canonized in the clone wars i think there's only one arc with him in it but it's quite a big one um It's Obi-Wan's in it, and Quinlan and him and Quinlan are trying to track someone. I think that's it, or something like Dooku. I've only seen the Clone Wars like twice, so it's kind of hard to remember the exact specifics. But Quinlan was then, um, he was meant to be in a big arc at the end of the Clone Wars, but it got scrapped. The the Clone Wars did before it got made. So Christy Golden adapted the script to make the book Dark Disciple with uh, Quinlan Voss and Asajj Ventress, which is a brilliant book. It was one of the earlier Patreon book reviews I actually released. And so Quinlan's got the the Quinlan Voss as well as Cal Kester. So Cal is the main character in Jedi Fallen Order. They both have the power of uh, psychometry or psychometry, if you want to say it how it's written. But psychometry is basically being able to touch objects and feel their force echoes. So if something substantial has happened to them, or what Quinlan Voss would often do is he'd go undercover, and then when he wants to find out, you know, of someone dealing drugs, for example, or spice, or oh, someone killed someone, but they left their weapon behind. Well, he can touch the, the drugs or the weapon or whatever and just see literally the last person who touched it. It's not always quite that simple, but in, in broad strokes, that's what you could do. So with psychometry, him using that to piece together the history of the galaxy, really well done. Very interesting story concept. I'd love to see more from that character. He was really cool. I think it was... Oh, God... I can't remember what his name is, the character, the main character in the book. I think it was Cass or something. Um, I'll try and put it in the, the second part, because I normally record the spoiler-free and the spoilery part slightly separately. So I'll try and remember when I do the uh, the second half um, that I put in his damn name, because now it's really annoying me, because I really liked the character. But really good book. Really good. I was very surprised by it. I bought it ages ago. I, it was actually one of the earliest Star Wars books I bought. I bought it... I got the Aftermath trilogy, then I read Ahsoka, then Lost Stars, and then I I think I bought like two or three books, and that was Force Collector from a certain point of view and something else, and I end up reading Certain Point of View, which is not a book I generally recommend to people. It's, it's, a, it's a tough read, Certain Point of View. There's a lot of cool stuff in there, but it, especially when you're in a cantina for about 70 pages, and it, oh, it, it's just hard going. Um, but Certain Point of View, some other book, and The Force Collector, and I just didn't get around to reading force collector and then the high republic came out and obviously all my energy has been spent trying to consume the high republic uh content and trying to keep up to date with the books so i just avoided it for ages and then me and megan went on holiday went to disneyland paris um and i'll be doing a podcast about that early 23 uh, on genuine church i won't just be on here and um when we went i was like oh i need another book because um, i just finished the high republic book i was like oh i'll buy you know kirsten white's padawan um, which, as I said, the review should be out for that by now. Um, and I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Really excited to read that. And I read it all. Like, on on the way back, I just finished it. I think or I was, like, a few chapters from the end. And then it was still a few more weeks before Path of Deceit was going to be delivered to me, which is the first book in the High Republic Phase 2. And I was like, well, maybe I should buy another book. And then I was we were unpacking a couple of boxes, because obviously we recently moved house, and there's just a, a few boxes of mine that I just haven't unpacked. I packed it and I found Certain Point of View, Empire Strikes Back, which I haven't yet read, and The Force Collector. And I was like, I saw there was a bookmark still in Force Collector where I read like one chapter of it or something, and then something else got my interest. 
And I was like, oh yeah, I, I remember this book, but I remember like nothing about it. So I picked it up and I, I read it pretty quickly. I, I, I blitzed through it in, in only a few weeks. So a really good book. It's one of those books that I feel like would be a really, really good entry point for anyone looking to get into Star Wars literature. So the, I'd say the three of the main books to recommend to people would be Claudia Gray's Lost Stars. I think that works perfectly with the original trilogy and the prequels to a little degree, but mainly the original trilogy. Arguably the best Star Wars book for young adults, I'd say. Phenomenal book. Then you've got obviously The High Republic that I would recommend to people because I love The High Republic. Original, new story, new characters, new perspectives, etc. Obviously, Light of the Jedi is where you start with The High Republic. Uh, and then the other book would be this one. Like, I, I think the Darth Bane book is fantastic and I would recommend that to people. But I feel like that's a book that Star Wars fans would really enjoy. I wouldn't give Darth Bane to, like, Megan or something, for example. I don't think she would enjoy it as much. And it's got... It's quite dark. And it is quite brutal in places as well. But, um... Yeah, I, I, I'm going to try my best to push this book out a bit which is why i think i may release it on the main feed because i really want more people to read this and i want more people to talk about it as well because i just don't hear anyone talking about it and i'm going I'm to see if i can reach out to kevin shinnick and see if he can come on the podcast because i'd love to talk to him because i think it's a real shame that this book has just gone under the radar even for me and i i, I was just really surprised how good it was i just think the characters are really well balanced the family dynamics are good the plot is thrilling like you think you it, it, it's not like to the degree that you turn a page and you're like, oh my god, mind blown, a Fight Club level twist. It's nothing like that. It's just the pacing of the book is really well done. And there's a degree of intrigue that I really appreciate that makes you want to read more that I really like. And it's, it's not like a big mystery intrigue story because any Star Wars fans knows the history of the galaxy because it's more or less what's told in the nine main movies, the episodic ones. So every, all of us know the main story and kind of seeing this character kind of have them unfold around him. The way it happens is so interesting and there's a couple of other characters that pop up that I, I, I love seeing. So I won't say who they are quite yet because we're not in the spoilery part yet. But yeah, spoiler-free thoughts are this book, it, if you haven't read a Star Wars book and you're looking to do it, if you just want to read one Star Wars book, read Lost Stars. If you just want to read two Star Wars books, read Lost Stars and Force Collector. If you want to get into a new franchise or you want a book series that's really going to reward you from reading more and is going to evolve as time goes on, then I'd say read The High Republic because you, you really need to read uh, three of them really to get a grip of what's going on. And by the time Phase 2 and Phase 3 fully come out, you're really going to have to have read probably nine books minimum. Um, and I've read nine in the first phase alone, so I'm, I'm probably going to have read nearer 30. Um, but yeah, spoiler free thoughts. It re I really like this book. Really liked it. I think... It, I'm torn between an eight and a half and a nine for this. I know... I, I was trying not to give too many books reviews out of ten, because I, I don't... I don't want any authors. I know most of these released on Patreon. Obviously, this one may be released to the general feed. I don't really want certain people to hear it, compare their book to another book, and think I don't like their book. It's more just. I, I think I, I think I'd probably give it a nine. I, I think that just for what this book set out to do, it did so well, and there are so many parts that I was just really enjoyed, and there are certain elements of things of like growth which is really important i find in young adult novels and the stories one can tell you know the force collector is the kind of book that i want to read to my kids that's that i don't have kids to clarify as of recording this i don't have kids if you're listening to this years years in the future maybe that'll be different uh, but at the moment i don't have kids but it's the kind of book because i've thought about it quite a lot of when i want to try and get my kids into star wars i know it's you can't always get your kids into stuff you like i'm, I'm aware of that i can i can accept that potential inevitability but i really i really want to get my kids into star wars obviously and i think this book would be a really good way in to get if you have if anyone's listening to this and you have kids uh, or even teenagers and they enjoy the star wars movies or they've at least kind of seen them i would recommend getting them this book and i mean the physical book not i haven't listened to the audio version if there is even an audio version i don't know but the physical thing of this book i 
I really enjoyed it. I really recommend it. Uh, so in that mind, let's move on to this spoilery stuff. So obviously I'm going to go into some of the plot details, some of the characters that popped up, and some of the more in-depth things that I enjoyed about it. So if you haven't picked up the book, which I imagine you haven't because no one seems to have, I would probably say, you know, if you have the intention of reading it, do that and come back, or you can listen to my review. As I said, the plot, although it's really good, you kind of know where it's going to a degree, I suppose. But I won't say anything else about it here. I'll, I'll uh, give you a bit of warning, and then uh, we'll delve into the spoilery stuff. So my spoiler-filled thoughts on Force Collector. I almost said The Force Collector. It's actually just called Force Collector. So the main character, I looked it up, is Karnuk Sin. K-A-R-R-N-U-Q-S-I-N. Three uh, names. And a friend he makes is called Maze, and his grandmother is called Jahara. I'm half saying that out loud so I also remember myself. So, the story begins with is Karnuk Sun and um, Kar Suk. Kar Nuk Sin. I'm going to call him Kar because that's how he's referred to the majority of the time in this book. Um, that's why I kept thinking it was Kaz, but, um, but still. So, Kar has got psychometry, as I said before, and he touches objects and his parents think that he's having like seizures and take him to doctors and things. And they're trying to work out basically what's wrong with him because, you know, there's this son that touches stuff sometimes and then has like a seizure on the floor. And apparently he looks quite violent and quite unpleasant. Um, but his grandmother is more attuned to the force and she she isn't necessarily force sensitive. I, th- I think she's like, oh, she's very, very, very mildly force sensitive to like barely even register it or she's not at all i can't remember one of one of the two but she basically teaches car that it's the force that's giving him these uh, visions these headaches these seizures and none of the other family really believe him uh, believe her and so whenever he has these visions the family don't really like it very much they get really worried and concerned and stuff while that's all going on um, to clarify, his grandmother passed away like uh, a year or two, a couple of years before the book uh, starts. So all the stuff with the grandma are flashbacks um, and they're done really well. And so when that's happening, you've got the modern day plot line that's going forward. And every now and then you get a bit of sprinkling of some of the, the kind of training that he went through with uh, Jahara, his grandmother. So he's in school and he's getting bullied a little bit and he's not very popular and stuff. Um, and it's on this sort of deserty world. It's not Tatooine or Jakku. It's another one, another one of the many. But he gets bullied a bit and then um, he gets called to the principal's office or headmaster, whatever they call it in this book. And yeah, he gets in a bit of trouble. And then his parents are like, you keep getting into trouble. We're going to have to send you off to trade school, basically. And he doesn't really want to do this. But in amidst this, when he gets sent to the head teacher's office, he meets a girl called Maze. Now, both the characters, I think I said, are around uh, between 14 and 16. I, I think maybe they're 15. That'd be a nice, easy answer. But they kind of connect a little bit. Maze is a bit more of a rebel and Carr is not so much. But obviously, he's got this force ability. She doesn't believe the Jedi were ever a thing. She thinks they've always been a myth and kind of playfully mocks him and stuff. And it kind of their relationship and things kind of pushes them to go off into the universe and still as teenagers they steal a ship and go off to try and find some hints towards cars like intrigue he wants to find about the jedi he wants to prove to maze that they're real so he uses his powers of psychometry to go around and touching important artifacts now he goes to places like galaxy's edge so that is the black spire outpost on the planet of batu and he goes to doc on dar's den of antiquities now doc on dar he you can actually see him he's an animatronic in a uh, Disneyland Galaxy's Edge so you get to see him and also you get to if you read the Galaxy's Edge 5 comic mini series that's an anthology that I tackled in Star Wars Comics and Canon a while ago now I think it was like mid 21 I think I tackled that uh, in that you get a lot more story about Doc Ondar and I know that there's the book um, I think it's just called Black Spire Outpost um, but that's also got more about him but, so Car goes to Jakku and he touches some stuff there which is quite cool no he goes to Batu rather he touches some stuff there um, he does then go to uh, Takodana and he speaks to Mars Kanata which is really really cool the interaction he has with her I won't I know it's a spoilery review but the interaction he has with her is really cool and she I, I love Mars any story of Mars Kanata in it I'm always very very happy about but then he does actually, I'm fairly certain in the story, he does actually go to uh, Jakku as well. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and I think, does he interact with Unkar Plutt? 
I'm, pr I'm pretty sure he does, because I know in Shadows of the Sith aren't Carl Plutz in it a lot more. I'm fairly certain in this book, but I don't know if I'm getting that confused. But I know he goes to Takodana. I know that he goes to um, Batu. He goes somewhere else as well. But he has visions. Like one of the visions he has is about um, Obi-Wan, which is quite interesting. He has another one about Luke and Obi-Wan, as in... So he's one about Obi-Wan when Obi-Wan is younger. Then he has one with Obi-Wan and Luke when they're on the Falcon because he finds the training droid, the, the little probe thing they use, the orb. There's a specific name for it. It's called like the, the Marksman 2 Hunter or something like that. But the floaty orb thing you see in A New Hope, um, he gets that and touches that and then sees Obi-Wan training Luke. And so he slowly develops his kind of force potential in a way and tr learns about the Jedi and what really happened he speaks to someone who remembers a bit more and slowly just unravels the events but while this all happens you find out that Maze's dad is part of the First Order so the First Order is like still searching for Luke Skywalker I think there's a set you know about a couple of years before uh, The Force Awakens so they're trying to find Luke Skywalker they think that Carl might know but he's like I don't know who you're talking about or where they are I'm trying to find them too and they're like what so you don't know where Luke Skywalker is he's like no I'm trying to find out if you let me continue my quest I might be able to find him I don't know and then it basically unravels and stuff that Carr he finds out that his grandmother's dad I think or grandmother's granddad I think it's grandma's granddad um, so his great great granddad he was actually a Jedi so that's how Jahara knows a bit more about the force and things like that but I'm skipping over certain details intentionally because as I always say with these reviews, I always encourage people to pick them up. And as I said in the spoiler free section, this is such a fun, enjoyable book. And there's so many references and fun things to pick up as you're reading, especially if you've obviously seen all the films. It's it's just a real delight to go through. And it's, it's a really warm, nice story. And I think there's a lot of lessons in there as well that I really like. There's a fun droid companion who's cool. There's, you know, interactions with mum and dad. There's a cool uh, older family member, obviously the grandma. There's Maze's parents and the difference there and their sort of her relationship with them compared to Carl's relationship with his parents. I think I've been saying Kaz quite a bit recently. Sorry if I happen. But yeah, I just think this book, it does so many things well. And the many connections it has really add to the story they don't feel cheap they don't feel like unnecessary cameos they feel like something that if someone was traveling around the galaxy and they were trying to find out more information about the jedi but they were basically just a teenager the kind of things they would come across and this air of like wonder and like he'd never left his home planet before and it's just really cool and the relationship with Maze and how they're both different but they really complement each other i just love it and everything with his grandma it's it's just the kind of book that i as i I think I said in the Padawan review that I'd love a trilogy of Padawan books. I would love a trilogy of Car Sook, uh, Car Nook Sin. I would love to see what he kind of does after the story and where he kind of goes with his life there. I would love for them to do some post episode nine content and him just pop up there. Like if they did like a Rogue Squadron book, a uh, Rogue Squadron movie, and Car was in that. And he was just this kind of resident force sensitive who wasn't necessarily a Jedi, but he can use the force to help them. Like when they find, oh, there's a Imperial remnant still hanging about or First Order remnant still hanging about. We need to help finding them. All we managed to recover was this blaster rifle. And then he can touch it and be, oh, the last place I saw them or the last place they used this was this planet. And then they go to that planet and then they find another clue. Like it has such a great opportunity for like a mystery being unraveled. Jedi Fallen Order kind of did this a little bit and I feel like if they did like a series of Quinlan Voss, I would say like they could do, if they did like a one-off series of Quinlan Voss, who obviously also has psychometry, and basically he's got two storylines going on he's got a modern day story which is set around the same time as the Kenobi show, so that he's kind of dealing with the path and trying to help some like Jedi refugees or force sensitive refugees kind of escape, if they, he did that and then he was also having flashbacks maybe each episode was like a different case that he tackled while as a Jedi and then the final episode or the penultimate episode he could be on a case when Order 66 happens and then you get to see how Quinlan Voss survives that that would be such an incredible show it'd really show a lot more of a mainstream audience psychometry because you get like a smidge of it in The Force Awakens but it seems like Anakin or Luke's lightsaber the Skywalker saber it seems that maybe that's more Force imbued less so than Ray has psychometry and then you get it in Jedi Fallen Order you get it in the Clone Wars a bit but you don't really get it much else you don't get the mainstream side of it so I'd love to see on screen fully 
psychometry. And I think if you had Quinlan Voss doing it, or you had two series maybe with Quinlan Voss, where you've got like the first series as I described, and the second series takes place kind of post episode six, and then it kind of leads into him meeting up with Car, and he kind of trains up Car in the ways of the Jedi and to use his psychometry powers even better. I would love that. I would happily give some of my savings to fund that for Lucasfilm. Not that Disney looks for need my money, um, but I, I, that's the kind of show I'd love to see. So I just think Force Collector, really good book. If you want a Star Wars book that's kind of easygoing, you, there's not like a billion characters to remember like there is with The High Republic. There's not like three books you have to tackle like with Darth Bane. There's not like three books you have to tackle with Darth Bane or like quite gruesome dark side details or there's a whole new era of lore that you kind of have to wrap your head around. If you just want a really good, enjoyable story about the Force and growing up, set between episode six and seven, nearer episode seven, really, really recommend you pick up this book. Kevin Shinnick did such a good job. And he is actually a writer for Robot Chicken. And he did something called Star Wars Detours, which was basically in production before uh, Disney's canon reset. And it was meant to be like a parody thing where they go to like certain places in the galaxy and it's a bit weirder and wonderful and there's like stories that are kind of jokey and things like that kind of like Robot Chicken but more canon aligned and more under the Star Wars banner but when Disney reset the canon they decided they didn't want some sort of weird comedy series that's not really canon because it would confuse people especially when they're trying to launch their own continuity and things but yeah Kevin Shinnick very talented individual really really enjoyed this book I really want to delve into some of his other works. There isn't that much on Star Wars. He's done like a few bits and pieces, but he hasn't really done any more original Star Wars content. I'm hoping he will. Really, really enjoy this book. So go pick this book up. Uh, It's it's thoroughly enjoyable. I'm just going to keep saying the same thing over and over again. Otherwise, Um, it's a real. I think this is one of those books that is a really good companion for the sequel trilogy. I, I think that if you enjoy the sequel trilogy, or maybe if you weren't as much of a fan of the sequel trilogy it might bring a little bit of extra wonder potentially to you kind of adds to it but that's gonna be enough for me my friends um i think i'm releasing this on patreon but i may end up releasing it on the main star wars comics and canon feed not fully sure what i'm gonna do i think i've decided to release the padawan book review on the main feed over the sort of holiday season so i think i'm gonna release this as a patreon thing but we shall see we'll see where it goes whoever's listening to this I really, really appreciate you listening to any of my content at all. So enough from me, my friends. Thank you so much for listening as always. No idea when this is going to come out, but I'm currently recording it near to Christmas. So it's probably going to come out probably in 2023, I imagine. But I hope you had a great Christmas and a great end to 2022. I hope your 2023 starts off with great fun and joy and, you know, well-wishing and great fortune and all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, it's enough for me. So thank you so much, my friends. I'll speak to you soon. And as always, may the force be with you. You have just experienced host, creator, everything else of genuine chit chat, and also the host and creator of Star Wars Comics and Canon, found on the Comics in Motion podcast, Mike Burton.